All right, questions for GM and head coach Derek Fisher. We'll start with Brady Clapper with SB Nation. Derek, obviously not the smoothest game, but uh, with with the injuries and just having being out so many bodies, having a new player in Lauren coming in, it, it seemed to me like you actually executed pretty well and, and a lot of the shots just weren't falling. How did you feel about your team's execution tonight? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think at times we did a lot of really good things. Like you said, we just we didn't convert on some opportunities uh, that we had around the basket. Uh, you know, some of our perimeter players, uh, you know, shot opportunities that are that are open, um, you know, good shots for a, a professional basketball game. I mean, very rarely are you going to be wide open. Uh, so it wasn't that we, you know, couldn't get opportunities. Um, you know, we we just couldn't convert. And, and uh, you know, I thought more more so than, than that, uh, you know, we did some pretty decent things overall, uh, offensively at least. I think, you know, defensively, we kind of just, you know, over the course of the game, you know, just, you know, kind of start to, to split and, and, and get spread out. And, you know, the fatigue starts to set in with the short rotation and you know, when shots aren't going in and especially, you know, shots you feel like should be going in, it, it just starts to drain your energy. And I mean, I, you know, for eight minutes and 30 seconds in that first quarter, you know, we, we were playing decent basketball and, and we really just, we blew the end of the first quarter and, that, and that's what good teams can't do. Right. Uh, Vegas finished the first quarter and, and pushed the lead up to nine. Uh, and, and we just didn't handle the close of that quarter well. And that's really where the separation, you know, kind of started. And we were never able to really get our confidence back from there. Uh, I think with this current group we have right now, like we're asking so much of them on a daily basis. Um, it, you know, it's tough to just keep fighting and fighting and fighting when things seem to get harder and harder uh, every time they do something. So, um, you know, we can't beat ourselves up too long. You know, we, we play this team again on Friday night. Uh, so we'll, you know, we'll look at some things and, and be ready to go again on Friday. Avi with Agent B Media. So, Coach, um, you all have a pretty tough stretch of games before the um, Olympic break. Uh, outside of just simple wins and losses, uh, what are you looking for to see um, out of your team that will signal progression into these next four games? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's a delicate balance, right. With, with, with limited bodies and, uh, you know, in a, in a season where, you know, there's still not practice players, you know, for teams and, uh, it's, it's very difficult to do the work that you need to do in between games, right. You can't really practice when you have, you know, seven or eight, you know, only nine healthy players, you're playing games every other day, or, you know, with travel, et cetera. So that that's challenging, um, you know, in itself. So for us, it, the game is really the only time we're, you know, facing a lot of the things that, you know, we're having to figure out uh, in particular with this group of our team. Uh, so I, I think overall, we want to continue to really just plan for one another and stand connected even through the adversity. Uh, that, uh, that's really the, I think, going to be the biggest challenge. Um, when you're fighting hard or you feel like you're, you know, you're giving everything you have, have and you're just exhausted and the, the losses kind of pile up, even though it's not that you're quitting, but you're losing games, um, then losing habits start to form. And if you can't practice breaking those habits, then they carry over into the game a little bit, uh, just in terms of breakdowns and communication, body language, you know, things that you need to practice and, and, and have repetition and, and, and keeping in the right direction. So for us, it's really just gonna be, um, you know, watching our body language, watching the way we communicate with each other, watching our willingness to still play for each other, right? Make extra passes, turn good shots to great shots, uh, defensively still communicating. And then if we if we can continue to do those things, even if the score isn't always in our favor, like we can, we can build on that as we go forward. Um, but, but, you know, harder said than done. Uh, but we're damn sure going to keep working and keep trying. John W. Davis with Linsider. Coach, I know we've talked about it a lot, but I was just wondering what the thought process was to start Brittany Sykes in this game. Yeah, I mean, just with, you know, we're, we're down so many people. I, I mean, at, at some point, you know, we, we just have to go with who we feel like will be best for that night. And, 
you know, it could change every night. Um, you know, we, we still uh, going forward, kind of plan for, you know, Brittany to be able to come off and, and solidify us both offensively and defensively, to be honest. But, um, you know, tonight was just one of those nights where we felt like, you know, the fact that Bria was away for a couple of days and we were fortunate to kind of get her back after she cleared waivers and just all the uncertainty, you know, whether Christy was going to be available tonight. I mean, there's no other way to do it, uh, it you know, to ask Arella or, you know, Carly or, or Bria or somebody to start just with all of the, you know, the transactions, so to speak, it would have, I think, have been a little bit more challenging for us. So, you know, it worked out well. Like I said, we got up to a solid start, but, you know, no matter who we start, like, you know, we, those players can't play 38 minutes every night. So I don't care who it is. We just, we have to find a way to be able to sustain um, not just the energy and effort, but like the ability to, you know, do the things that we are capable of doing, right? Which is, you know, we can control that. We, we, we're not asking anybody to be NECA, to be Shanae, to be Christy, to be Jasmine, to be anybody else. Uh, just the best version of, of, of who she is. And, and we have enough. Amanda Skirlock with the LA Sentinel. Um, Amanda Zellway B um, scored what, 18 points in the first half. Could you talk to me a little bit about her performance? Yeah, I mean, Aziz, uh, you know, it's been a rough stretch in terms of like matchups at the center position with, you know, from, you know, playing against Phoenix three times recently, Washington, uh, you know, it just hasn't been easy in terms of matchups and the type of players that she's having to face every night. Uh, so I just think as Z continues to work through like just the fatigue and the exhaustion that she's feeling playing games every other day against the best centers in the world, uh, you know, she just accepted the challenge tonight to play against a great front court in Vegas. And, uh, you know, she came out to compete and, and play hard and did some really good things for us on both ends, honestly. But again, we, you know, we can't ask her to do, you know, more from a, like playing more minutes and do it. Like it's, it's hard to, to play that many minutes at, at such a high level uh, against these players. So, uh, you know, we, we just have to keep helping her and helping our group. Um, you know, recover as much as possible and then be ready to lace them up again on Friday. And, I, you know, hopefully she'll be ready to come back and give us another, uh, you know, similar effort and, and give us a chance to win. And for a couple more, we'll go to Michael Matthew with the Good News Network. Yo, what's up, Coach? Uh, so my question is for the guard play. Uh, how, what do you think you, your guards can do better as far as, like, penetrating and trying to get the bigs into uh, – foul trouble to kind of give you guys a, an advantage there? Yeah, I mean, I think we could just, um, as I think some of it is like finishing plays better, right? If, if you know, if our guards have opportunities at the rim, you know, we we have to be able to convert and finish those. Like we, the amount of layups that we have, you know, that sometimes roll in and out or get close or don't quite go in, uh, you know, we just have to keep working at those things and get better uh, there. Uh, I think also, continuing to, to, to see those opportunities to, to, to drive and, and touch the paint, but then be ready to make teammates better in terms of passes coming out. Uh, some of that, you know, our spacing has to be great in order for them to do that. Um, and, and, and then I think the other point, in, in which isn't really less uh, of a priority, is managing our team, you know, more so than even, you know, her individual play. But it's managing our team, right, our guards and, and, and the people with the basketball uh, you know, we have to continue to work for, for them to be the example of what it is we need at that time. If we need composure, if we need poise, if we need confidence, if we need a quality shot, uh, if we need a big defensive stop, if we need to understand the time and score and situation, uh, that's what guards have to do. That's, that, that's part of the job description. So those are things that we can continue to improve in. Um, but, it, you know, it's, it's when you're wiped out, it's just, it's harder to do those things at a high level, to be honest. So, um, you know, we just have to keep fighting and, and pushing um, and and make sure that we're, you know, we're, we're making sure we don't uh, allow our group to feel that we don't still trust and believe in them and have confidence in them so that when they go out to play every night, um, they still believe in who they are. And, and you're seeing a lot of that happen. It's just tough when things start to turn 
and, and having to get to that deeper level of energy that it takes to win at this level, uh, that's hard to do on on uh, on low on low energy. Uh, two more. We'll go to Chris Camello with Nightcast Media. Hey, Coach. Um, thanks for taking the time. Um, uh, yeah, so I wanted to actually just digress a little bit off the game. Uh, obviously, there was a lot of NBA stars tonight, Wade, LeBron, uh, Dame Lillard. How important is it that they show up uh, to support this WNBA league, this brand? You know, you talked about, you know, you, you consistently talk about growing it. How important is it for those uh, guys to show up and, and show that support and really, you know, help get more eyeballs on these games and throughout this league? Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think it's really important, um, you know, that the support comes in from, um, you know, the, the guys that, that play in the NBA, like, you know, these are their sisters, you know, to be honest, like the, the, the leagues are, uh, joined together in a lot of ways. And, um, you know, I, I think they, uh, you can tell that, you know, guys are starting to really take that seriously that, you know, they, they feel that they they need to come out and show love and show support and, you know, we appreciate it here in L.A. and, you know, other guys around the league that are going to other, you know, WNBA venues and showing up to games like, um, you know, I, I think the players appreciate it. Uh, I know our fans appreciate it. And, uh, you know, it's it's important to continue to grow this game. And, you know, they're the best basketball players in the world. Um, and so when they support something and they put a stamp on something, they validate something, um, I, I think other people around the world uh, tend to pay closer attention. So, um, you know, we, we welcome them here in LA anytime um, because it helps uh, and, and, uh, and we need to support in a major way. Last question for coach, we'll circle back to Brady. Derek, I have two just really quick questions here. Uh, the first is just your thoughts on, on Lauren Cox and, and her debut with the team. And second, uh, if you have any thoughts on Erica and Amanda being omitted from the all-star roster. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the first, I, I thought Lauren, you know, in a really difficult situation, like just did some really good things, right? She, you know, no practice, no shoot around, no idea on terminology and, and sets and actions. And because of her feel for the game, like she just did a lot of really smart things. Uh, she was in the right places at times offensively understood the right play to make uh, defensively when to rotate or how to send somebody else to go rotate. Like, so we thought we saw some, some great things from Lauren and um, you know, we, we know that it was a lot to get here and, and fly in, you know, and, and show up to a game. We've never been with these people before, but uh, we, we thought she did a really admirable job. Uh, so hopefully, you know, she can get some rest and we can, you know, help her get even better prepared for Friday night. Uh, the second question, um, you know, I think at, at least Amanda was like on the ballot to be voted for the All-Star game. And, you know, if you have the opportunity and, you know, however the vote count is tab tab tabulated with fans and coaches and media, whatever the combination is, and the percentages, um, sometimes, you know, things shake out that way. Um, you know, so well, and, and bigs are always having to, they have a tougher time anyway at times with, with all-star games. Um, what I, what's really weird and kind of frustrating, I think to us more than anything is that Erica Willer wasn't even listed as a candidate to be on the all-star team. And that's just doesn't make sense very, to be honest. So, um, it, it is what it is, like whether it's Team USA, All-Star, whatever, like, you know, it's just that type of year right now. And, uh, you know, I think for our players, you know, they just have to use it as uh, motivation and inspiration uh, to keep getting better and take away all the excuses and the reasons why, um, you know, people feel like they aren't deserving and just take all of that out and, you know, they can worry about that, I guess, next year as far as all-star stuff. You know, uh, right now we'll just stay focused on getting healthy and, you know, try to get our team going in a, in a better direction. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. All right, media, please raise your hand uh, for questions for Taya Cooper. We'll start with 
Mello with Nightcast Media. Uh, hey, Taya, thanks for taking the time. Um, obviously, a, a, a tough game tonight. Um, but, uh, you know, I just wanted to kind of digress a little bit away from the game. You know, I saw you had a moment where you got to, you know, shake hands with Dwayne Wade and, and LeBron. And, you know, talk about that support you guys uh, get from the NBA players and the extended NBA family and how important that is for, for not just for yourself, but for your team and, and for the league at a larger, on a larger scale. Um, I got to really know them in the bubble last year. Um, I was there when they won the championship. So it was nice to see his face again. Um, it's always nice to see all of their faces, you know, when you get love from that side, it's a, it's a great feeling to see them sitting there supporting us. And, um, you know, it's, it's all love from, from each side. Michael Matthew with the Good News Network. Yo, what's up, Taya? Uh, my question is, how tough is it for you guys, for the, all the guards there, to to go and get like easy buckets that you guys usually do against other teams, against uh, the Aces with the the two bigs that they have? Um, honestly, I think it was us. We couldn't we couldn't really hit tonight, and um, a lot of stuff was rolling out. We just couldn't we just couldn't let it just wasn't falling. Um, I think um, the defense has changed. The defense has changed every night, depending on the team. You play the team back to back. So what they did today might be different tomorrow. Um, and um, yeah, hopefully they fall the, the day after tomorrow. Two can you win with the LA Times. Tay, you got to play a little bit with Lauren at Baylor. What's it like to have her back and, and see her play in on such short notice? What did you think she brought to this team today? Um, it was, you know, it's always a great feeling to play with somebody who you played with before. Um, you know, sick of bears. It was, it was a great um, thing to see her even walk in the gym. I ain't seen uh, Lauren since since Baylor, so it was it was very refreshing to see her face and. See her in high spirits, and I'm glad you know she gets this opportunity to be out here and we get to be together. So I'm happy for her, and I was happy to see her. Amanda Scurlock with the LA Sentinel. Hey, can you walk me through that play where you forced the jump ball against Liz Cambage? Um, what do you mean? It was like this play, you guys had to, um, you were kind of tangled up with this Cambage and then they, you kind of had to force the jump ball. It was like, as they were battling out for the ball. Oh, honestly, um, it had nothing to do with Cambage. I was actually frustrated that I kept missing layups and then I ended up getting a jump ball and then I was trying to take it. John W. Davis, Windsider. You know, what are one or two things that you already know that you need to do on Friday to be more successful against the Aces? Um, I would say disrupt them on offense. Um, push the ball in transition, less turnovers. Um, we were like a step behind, so, you know, rotate all at the same time and be on the same page and then pay attention to details and knock down shots. Last question for Taya. We'll go to Brady Clapper with SB Nation. Taya, is it frustrating as a teammate to see everything that Erica has done for this team this year and, and not get rewarded with an all-star nomination? Um, I, it started with NECA not being Olympian. And then now to see her, you know, um, to see it happen to Erica, it's like, y'all got pressure with the Sparks or something? Like, I don't know. It's, I don't know. I think they deserve it. They just get left out. They get left out of the, out the um, conversation. I honestly think um, she deserves to be an all-star. And um, she's been hooping. And I'm proud of her. We're proud of her. Fish, the staff, everybody's proud of her. And um, it's just unfortunate. Honestly, it's nothing that she, she can or couldn't do. But that's unfortunate because she definitely deserves to be there. Thanks, Taya. Our media 
Thanks for joining. Uh, we'll end tonight with questions for Amanda Zowie B. We'll start with Chris Camello. Hey, Amanda, thanks for taking the time. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, I just wanted to kind of talk about, um, you know, this, the atmosphere was obviously a little different tonight with a lot of the NBA players showing up. Uh, you know, when they're here to watch your guys' games, uh, what, what do you feel like? How much support does that, does, do you feel fr from that and as well as uh, trying to uh, grow, grow the brand of the WNBA moving forward? How important is that? I mean, it's great that they're coming out. Um, I have my boy JR, come, uh, he came to the last home game. It's always fun to see them and, you know, they appreciate our game. Um, but it's not something that we focus on. It's not something that I focus on. Um, you know, when they out here, they spectators and fans and supporters, just like any other human. And we appreciate, appreciate all of them. It's great. It's great that they're out here and we wish they could come to more games. Um, yeah. We focus it on us. Mikel Matt, the Good News Network. Yo, what's up, Amanda? What's up? Uh, great game tonight. Uh, you played well. Uh, tell me about the challenge uh, it was to go against those two uh, great bigs with uh, Liz and uh, Asia. You know, it's, it's funny because every time we play a team, you guys ask me the same question. <laughs> every team got great bigs in this league. It's the best league in the world um, with the best players in the world. And every night is a fight to guard whoever's on the court. Um, you know, I don't know. You guys gonna get the same answer every time because we absolutely got the best players in the league out here. So every night is a fight. Brady Klopp with SB Nation. Amanda, um, first with NECA missing or getting snubbed from the Olympic roster and now you guys not having an all-star when you and Erica had pretty strong cases. Um, is that a frustrating thing for you and for the locker room or is it inspiring, motivating? What's the what's the vibe there? We haven't talked about it. Still think that it's bullshit that NECA's not an Olympian. And that's my take on it. But I'm an all-star or not, they bullshitting around with not putting her in the Olympic team. Any other questions tonight? All right, thank you, Amanda. Thank you.